Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. The Spear of Destiny, an artifact that was only mentioned once in the Holy Bible, in the Gospel of the Apostle John. Since its use to puncture the side of the crucified Jesus, historians and occultists have searched far and wide for it. Wherever the spear traveled, rumors of magic and power have gone along with it. But what is fact? And what is fiction? In the end, there are only two main questions that need to be asked regarding the weapon. Is there any credibility to the rumors that surround the artifact? And where exactly is the final resting place of the Spear of Destiny? Now Paratruth presents the Spear of of Destiny with special guest co-host Jerry Kozak. What's up folks? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are broadcasting from the Paratruth Radio Network. We are, as you can see if you're watching YouTube, in two different states this week again. I love how you clear your throat as if it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a fun and interesting couple of weeks. But, you know, you got to get back to the way things are supposed to be, I suppose, Harry, once in a while. I suppose. I suppose, yeah. It's not a bad thing. Now, if anything, we have a whole room to ourselves again instead of fitting into a tight little space. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, and it, you know, it, it was a great show. Like, everybody said they loved it. We had 35 people listening live, and Heidi played us up great with, with her family and friends that she was with. So it was awesome to do it in person. And I even told you, sometimes I truly miss it because you, you don't get that full effect unless you're with the person in the same room compared right. to it two separate areas right um <clears throat> yeah well folks uh, you can see i'm actually in a completely different place if you're watching youtube than yeah. where i normally am um uh, back in the basement uh, uh of my parents home this for the rest of the summer so my lighting is a little darker than uh normal but that's okay um for those of you who haven't seen it or perhaps you have this past week we we, we released our first three episodes of Paramyxology. Uh, the first is an intro, and then we have the ectoplasm <laughs> and <laughs> and the vamp. Uh, if you haven't checked those out, look up Paramyxology. You, I think you're going to like them, especially if you like to drink or enjoy a refreshing uh, alcoholic beverage here and there. You might want to check them out. They're, you know, they're pretty cool videos. They're fun and uh, some. Interesting mixers, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, so if you like mixers, whether they're shots or, you know, martinis or whatever, uh, check them out. Let us know what you think. Hit us up. And, uh, you know, we'll be bringing more of those to you uh, in due time. We're just trying to get a feel of what everyone else thinks, you know, what everyone, if anyone likes it, for example. You know, we're, we're not going to keep working on something if people don't want to, you know, tune into it or, you know, whatever. So uh, this is definitely for you fans. Uh, for anyone who's you know a fan of the show, a fan of us, or just a fan of having a refreshing beverage, so uh, check them out. Uh, speaking of, Shelley just told me uh, that she had shared the videos with Lorena, her her friend from work, that we went to go eat at. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And she said that she loved it. So, <laughs> so that Good. was 
pretty pretty awesome. So she also said that she had got uh, another YouTube viewer, uh, Omar, her husband, to subscribe to us as well. So it will be pretty cool to see uh, what type of response we actually get from it all. Nice. Well, that's cool. Um <clears throat> Anything been going on for you this week? I mean, now that family's gone, you're back on your own doing nothing. <laughs> uh, well, I had some interviews. Uh, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, for those of you that don't know me personally, uh, I did decide to resign from my previous uh, job. So I am currently unemployed, looking for an employment. And so everybody keep their fingers crossed for me. All right. Well... And I think that was I'm, the bell of the angels. So it might have been what those the angels. <laughs> think they're they're acknowledging. So uh, um, <clears throat> anything on well, your end? Um, nope, nothing here. No news just on festivals or anything as of yet. No, nothing yet. Uh, just just kind of relaxing this week. So, so but on that note, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. For the next week, why not? Uh, on that note, enough about us, folks. We do have a brand new episode coming at you here today. Uh, we are discussing the Spear of Destiny. Now, whether it's the Spear's destiny, your destiny, my destiny, our destiny, we don't know. But it's the Spear of Destiny, and that's all we know. Also referred but, to as the Holy Lands. There's actually numerous well, names for it, right. which is like ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to get into too much of it right now because we do have a, you know, special guest co-host uh, joining us tonight uh, on Parachute Radio. And, it, of, of course, it is our good old friend... Jerry Kozak. So I think without further ado, we're going to jump to the line with Jerry. Jerry, welcome back to the show. It's good to have you. It's good to be on the show again. Glad to have the trio underneath the Paratruth umbrella once again. (laughs) 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 Or being on the Paratruth radio train. (laughs) Me and my weird analogies, I'm sorry. (laughs) So this is post wedding for Justin. Woo yeah. Raise the roof. <laughs> he seems so excited, doesn't he? <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> well, over, so I'm just like, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, just th- thank you God that you could just relax and chill with yeah. your beautiful new bride and. And uh, the stress is over. It's a good stress. I remember the stress that we had for our wedding. It, to be honest with you, I think it's always more fun to attend somebody else's wedding. So, for instance, Eric, if you happen to get married and you invite uh, my husband and I, you know, hopefully we could go to your wedding and then we could we could relax and have fun watching your wedding. But being the one getting married, it's 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 wonderful, but it's a little stressful, you know, because all eyes are on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's. I'm not a fan of weddings. I never have been. Even, even I don't even like going to them, let alone standing in front of everybody. But I'll tell you, Justin did this. <laughs> now I didn't know about this until I was already standing at the front with them, and uh, I was given the rings and I was told to pass them over, pass them out. I didn't know. I thought I thought they meant give them to Justin and his wife. You know, like. And Justin turns to me, he's like, no, 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 go pass them to everybody in the audience. And I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. So it's a little awkward. And it took what? It it felt like it took like at least a half an hour to get around to everybody. It took. Oh, my gosh. gosh. (laughs) Well, it was at least a three minute song, three and a half minute song that uh, our ring bearer or or, yeah, our ring bearer had sang. And then uh it was just dead air, and we're like, okay, they're still passing it around. Can somebody do something? So finally, the the duet that we had hired to play the uh, entrance and exit for the the wedding party finally was just started playing. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> oh wow uh, well it sounded like it was exciting and a blast nonetheless wow that's great, mm, that's great. Yeah, I wish, that's fun. we yawns. wish we could have been there as he yawns <laughs> hey that, that's a post a post wedding and post travel yawn yeah. I understand <laughs> I'm, I'm exhausted but I, I could not catch tell. up it was only all right so we we're only or he's only one hour behind East Coast time, you know, and then I think we went to South Dakota, we were two hours behind, and it's not much, but that one single hour has done me in terribly. <laughs> oh, sure. I, oh, absolutely. I've been, I've been getting to bed so late this week and waking up so late, and I'm just, like, tired all the time, and, oh, ugh. Man. It, so are you, have you graduated from school already? I've got one semester left. One semester. Okay. Yeah, right. so looking forward to it. It's getting close. I'll be getting done in close. November. Wow, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Exciting news for you both. Yeah. Lots of changes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of positive changes. They say change is good. Yeah. That, that That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, great. Well, as everyone knows who's been listening, today we are speaking of the Spear of Destiny. And so I'd like to go ahead and get into that with you guys. But first and foremost, I just want to read the passage in the Bible in which the Spear of Destiny is actually mentioned. And I want to let everyone know that the Spear of Destiny is actually only mentioned one single time throughout the entire Bible. And it's mentioned by the Apostle John in his gospel. It's John 19, 31 to 35. And it says, Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. Again, that is John 19, 31 to 35. Now, Justin, Jerry, I know we've all done the research here, and there's quite a bit of information on the Spear of Destiny, and some of it is a little out there. If you ask me, but it's a very, very, very popular artifact amongst historians and amongst occultists. One known occultist, occultist, one of the most popular, probably or most famous, is that of Hitler. Mm. Now, here the spear is only mentioned once in John nineteen thirty four. So, why do you think it is, you know, as popular as it is? Well. With Hitler, he was searching for a way to power. So he was trying to get any artifacts that he could find or thought he was finding to to bring that power to him. Uh, where he had heard that this lance would give him power, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really say in the research. He just It just says that he had found it. And so, I mean, for the lance to be lost to eternity is... I wouldn't say closed-minded because, I mean, there have been plenty of weapons that have been destroyed and what have you from the time around that time. But you would think that that lance would have somehow been coveted because it had the blood of Jesus on it. So somewhere down the line, whether it was his followers or people that were non-believers who thought maybe, hey, this is the blood of Jesus... I know that I don't believe that he is the son of God, but th- there might be something to this. Uh, so I, th- I think it would have been saved. I think it would have been a momentous thing for the Romans to hold and cherish because it was their their uh, vanquishing of this particular person that was claiming to be the king of kings. Well... And I'm going to step in on that for a moment because at the time, the Romans didn't care whether Jesus was the king of kings or whether he was God. They simply did what they did, that is the crucifixion and whatnot, only to keep the Jews from rioting in the streets and destroying things. Uh, So at the time, I don't think there really was any particular reason for the Romans to keep it. 
as it wasn't until the Apostle John uh, was, you know, brought up out of the dust, if you will, and uh, started preaching to the Romans. Um, now, does that mean that the spirit wasn't left somewhere in particular where, you know, they knew that this was a particular spirit that they had killed Jesus with? I don't know. Uh, the guy who killed Jesus, it is said in the Bible that he had become a believer the moment he had stabbed him and saw the water and blood. So there's a good possibility that he protected the spirit for whatever reason, as a memento or a remembrance or whatever. Uh, but, you know, I mean, again, that's all up in the air. A lot of that is, I think both of these uh, on both sides is coming from uh, just our own personal views or interpretations of what we're finding you know, within our research. Jerry, what about you? Any thoughts? Well, it, it is interesting that um, the folklore, uh, like, or not the folklore, but the uh, the legend surrounding it had to do with Hitler um, cherishing it and even perhaps idolizing it, seeing that it had some sort of uh, mystical or mythical powers, even though he didn't believe you know that Jesus, like you said, is the Son of God. Um, in fact, he. Well, some people thought he was a quote Christian. I'm thinking, okay, what Christian would there be that would kill, you know, uh, six million Jewish uh, Jews? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so he definitely was not a Christian, and, and actually, he was definitely a Satanist or, or, you know, he, he definitely, you know, uh, consorted with occult powers and such. So I think that whatever, you know, lore that he heard throughout the years, you know, uh, got to him. And then, you know, he thought because, um, you know, like you said, Jesus's blood, you know, uh, or the residue thereof is on it, that it, it possessed some sort of, uh, Powers that would give him perhaps political powers, uh, maybe uh, as a shield around him or what have you. Um, I did hear, in addition to that, um, some sort of legend that whoever lost the Spear of Destiny uh, would have some sort of curse put on them. And and supposedly the legend goes is that since uh, uh, Hitler lost the Spear of Destiny to uh, somebody else, uh, that he committed suicide, um, henceforth as a result, uh, or a roundabout curse, I guess, uh, and then whoever um, took it from Hitler, there were, he died in a car accident, I believe. Uh, so, I don't, as we probably all agree that, that the, the Spear of Destiny, you know, uh, doesn't have any, you know, magical powers or, or mystical powers in and of itself or whatever. It's just, you know, what people ascribe to it. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> well, first of all, in regards to the Satanist thing, it, it is important to know that Hitler's mentor, the man who had mentored Hitler, was a Satanist. Uh, and so it's only safe to assume uh, that there is a great possibility that S- Hitler himself was a Satanist as well. Uh And obviously he did dabble in the occult. We know that. That's a historical fact. Um, As for the curse, it has been mentioned through numerous accounts, and these are all uh, so-called witness accounts that – or legends, if you will, or folklore. You could use folklore here as well – that anyone who had possession of the spear would be given great power of either good or evil over the world. They'd be able to basically – control the world uh and if you were to lose it then death would come upon you now it historically speaking there have been numerous people who had had the spear only to lose it and upon losing it have died almost immediately uh now whether or not it's this this exact spear that was used to stab jesus in the side we don't know uh in fact there are three different cities or countries claiming to have the spear in their possession which means there are three spears out there right now, and obviously they can't all be the same spear, uh, considering they're in multiple locations. So who exactly has the real spear? We don't know. If anyone, they might all be fake. But when you look through the scriptures, we do notice, for example, the Ark of the Covenant, which God himself uh, had put a curse on. If certain people were to touch it, they were to die or become sick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, you know, if something like that was equal with the spear, it would make sense. But there's no curse on the spear in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible saying that there's any type of power behind it or anything like that. 
this power simply comes from man's imagination. Mm. Uh, and the fact that there's been deaths upon losing the spear, could it be just chopped up to uh, uh, coincidence? I mean, I know coincidence is something that we don't all necessarily believe in you know, on this show, but there, there's some interesting uh, connections between these people, their death, and the so-called loss, uh, possession and loss of the spear. Coincidence is, is totally right, um, I think. I mean, I know I've, I've heard of different um, relics, uh, uh, like, for example, the only thing that pops into my mind is um, this particular mummy. And I, I was just, it was one of those forwarded emails, like, a few years ago that I read about, oh, this, this particular man, you know, in the 1600s obtained this particular mummy. And then, you know, then he committed suicide. And, and then, then it was bought by this particular man. And then, then he, you know, uh, he hung himself or whatever, you know. And, and, and yeah. you know, I think it's the same thing. I think people want to believe in something um you know, surrounding, you know, uh, a relic. Um, I know that the Catholic Church, um, you know, tends to focus on different relics and, st- and such, um, you know, and I think that they're not necessarily worshiping them, but maybe they, they feel like, uh, you know, a sense of empowerment from God, you know, mm-hmm. for having these different relics. I think one of the countries um, uh, was in Austria. And what were the other two countries? Uh, who are claiming to have it? Claiming to have it. Uh, hold on a second. Bring it up. Uh, we have, actually, we have Rome, Vienna, uh, Akmedizin, I think is, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. It's in Armenia. Okay. Armenia. okay. But there are also the- references to... It being held in Germany, which obviously, if Hitler supposedly had it, that's would make sense. Also in Poland, in Prague, uh, in uh, there was one other place. Oh, and Vienna. So yeah, H- Hungary. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing, guys. It, which is it's interesting to me. Like some of the big. Uh, not cons- I guess it could be concerns, but some of the big uh, beliefs in regards to some of these historic items. We're thinking of the Spear of Destiny. We're thinking of the Shroud of Christ. Uh, I think we, we can bring up the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. All of these things supposedly have power in some way or somehow, right? And yet we never once see anything about the nails of the Christ crucifixion having power. And yet those things went directly through his hands, his bone, his flesh, his blood, everything, which means they should have more power than, you know, the spear should, but yet we don't hear anything about it. There, there's no, you know, there's nothing to it. There's no belief system in it. So why is that? Is it because the spear itself uh, has some sort of meaning behind it? You know, a, a type of power or strength that, you know, the spear itself as an image You know, you you think of like a strong man holding a spear, getting ready to go into war. I mean, is that the only reason or, you know, what's going on here? I don't I don't really know. Um, Well, and here here's the thing, too. Nobody's ever said that the the nails of from the cross have been recovered either. Uh, Is that because that none, none of these relics are truly from that, that, as Jerry said, we're just giving them meaning and power, so in a sense, they they have that power. Yeah, it's a good possibility. Why we have not found those nails, and we found the spear on the Shroud of Turin, that wouldn't make any sense. Why would we have not found the cross itself, even, with the nails in it, or the crown of thorns, or any other relic that went down during the crucifixion we've just found the shroud where he died and then was resurrected and then found the actual thing that killed or well i shouldn't say it didn't kill him it just proved that he was dead uh why why did we find those relics and nothing else probably I, i would lean towards we're probably giving things meaning that aren't really there uh, so I, I'm trying to understand what you're saying here. So are you saying that we are using 
creating replicas even and giving meaning behind them or actually having the actual pieces of history that you know giving are what everyone says they are um yeah I mean, I'm, power. Just, I'm saying that we have these relics but we're we're just saying this has to be the spear that killed Jesus Christ this has to be the shroud that was his death shroud there is no way of proving that these right. things are the either of those things what they are right okay i see what you're saying yeah well in, re- in regards to power, because you had mentioned at the beginning that Hitler was looking for this spear in, in an effort to gain power. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had read one source who had mentioned that perhaps this power wasn't that of physical power or mental power or power over the world, but instead in uh, finances and money. Okay. Could it be that Hitler, instead of looking for power as we consider power, that is control over something, was simply looking for the weapon as a way to sell it off and, you know, earn money and financing for his program? Uh, Yeah, I know it's sick. Uh, (laughs) To, to, you know, to help him and the Nazis move forward. And we know that Hitler and the rest of the Nazis would gather up a lot of the treasures that the Jewish people would have in their homes. Um, they would stock it up. They found houses just stocked full of treasure. Why were they holding on to that treasure? Did they, I mean, did they have some kind of hoarding issue or <laughs> were they actually holding on to it so that they could sell it off and help finance everything that they were doing, you know? Um, so what exactly is the term power or does this term power mean here? Right. I think that it has to do with power over one's enemies. Uh, maybe even saying that whoever is the possessor of the hallowed spear uh, is equal with Christ. Because it sounded like Hitler wanted to deify himself. And, you know, as we had talked about before, that, you know, he was a Satanist. Uh, his mentor was a Satanist, um, and that totally makes sense, considering Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, so I think that that saying that he possessed it, or you know, or what, whatever, whether he possessed it or whether it was a rumor that he possessed it, uh, if he did possess it, I think that he wanted to maybe show the world, you know, look, I'm equal with Christ or mm. I, I've even bested Christ or something like that. I don't know. Who knows? Um, I know that, that, um, you know, Satanism, you know, uh, you know, tends to, uh, or witchcraft and whatever. Um, I think that they, they tend towards, um, objects, um, that, that if you, if they have, they have an object of yours, um, even in some pagan religions, if they have, you know, those, those, your hair, they have, you know, a piece of your cl- clothing or, or whatever, you know, then you can have power over them. So maybe he felt like because he had the spear, he could, you know, command God to do his bidding, you know, w- which was, you know, sick and twisted, you know, uh, the the, yeah. the program, you know, may, maybe it wasn't just to, you know, uh, get fame and notoriety, but but maybe it was like something occultic, uh, if that's a word, uh, that that he you know wanted to show the world that you know, um, oh, show the world plus maybe doing something occult, uh, you know, with maybe there was some significance, you know, by obtaining it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you. We can only speculate at this point because we we have the history behind a lot of this stuff, but what were his his intentions in obtaining this stuff? And you know, I, I believe that yeah, he he did things and they were gross and whatever. But he he thought that he was he was doing a righteous cause. Not saying mm-hmm. he, that's true at all. But in his mind, he was doing a righteous cause, uh, and there's speculation that you know his stepfather was was a Jew or his real father was a Jew, and beat him, and that's why he decided to re- uh, rain this terror on the Jews. Uh, there's speculation that he himself was Jewish and was ashamed of it, and so he felt he probably was thinking that he was doing. God's bidding by eliminating See, the Jews. I don't know. I mean, 
I actually, I, I was going to say, I don't know if I can, I can necessarily believe that, but I, I guess I could when you think of uh, Muslims and how they act out in regards, you know, for God in, in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, how many suicide bombers are there in the name of God, which is just sick because anyone who really reads the scriptures and know God knows that God isn't going to command anyone to go kill a bunch of people and kill themselves in the process. And, you know, especially nowadays after the New Testament. The Bible tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves, not to go destroy and kill and be evil and so on and so forth. Obviously, the Muslims are following a completely different God, uh, which is written about in a completely different book, which is not uh, holy by any means, which is not good, which is not uh, a life giving. It's, it's just all evil and it's all damning, you know, in the end. Um, the one thing that's interesting is if. If Hitler really did believe that what he was doing was good, then why did he kill himself when the U.S. started started getting close? You know, uh, and of I course the history so because there are people that believe he didn't kill himself that it was a double. Uh, hmm. Possibly, possibly. I, I've heard some conspiracy theories that that Hitler is living in hollow earth or is somewhere in Antarctica and what have you, um, that there were, since then, uh, Hitler perfected cloning, uh, and that somehow whoever, you know, whatever body was found was a clone, and that he, in fact, is living in, like I said, hollow earth. And whether or not that's true, who knows? You know, I, I, I don't think, occult powers would have given him you know uh the elixir of immortality or anything like that but you never know i know that satan can give these temporal gifts in exchange for one soul such as maybe giving um a person you know a temporary immortality you know on earth and what have you maybe that's what happened who knows well at least with from a scientific viewpoint you know maybe this this eternal life that satan promised him was uh, through cloning, through you know transfer of consciousness, you know from uh, one body to another, and there's conspiracies out there uh, that that state that that's been done, that it's being done right now. Uh, so who knows? May- maybe his physical body, you know, died there, but you know his his consciousness is you know in another body, you know in a, mm-hmm. in Antarctica. I know that's really bizarre out there, but I've read a lot of weird stuff <laughs> that that is rooted in in science fiction quasi science fact yeah. i don't know <laughs> well it, it i've heard the same same type of of thing so it's it's one of those things that you, you don't really know what what truly happened and i mean there are people that are saying that osama bin laden same thing he's not dead they didn't produce a body he's still out there uh so we're just left to believe what they're telling us and it's Eric and I, as we've said before, don't get into the conspiracy theories that often because it's just one of those things that you eventually just keep running after. But um, all right, right. folks, uh, I think we're going to take our first break here. You've been listening to Paratruth Radio right here on the Paratruth Radio Network with our special guest co-host, Jerry from Thai Girl for God Radio. We will be right back after Eric's Random Fact of the Day. Random fact of the day. Beer, mustaches, beer mustaches, mustaches and beer. We've all seen the guy with the mustache drinking beer. As he pulls the mug away from his mouth, behold, beer is left covering the stash. Most of us find it funny. Others simply wipe it off and continue to drink. But did you know that donning a stash while drinking beer is actually costing you money and wasting beer? Well, according to factslides.com, 162,719 pints of Guinness beer are wasted each year simply due to mustaches. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. 
And I'm Eric. And I'm Jerry. And uh, we've been talking about the Spear of Destiny, also referred to as the Holy Lance in some places. Uh, as Eric had said before the show, it's got so many other names. Uh, what other names did you come across, Eric? Uh, well, you've got the Holy Lance that you'd mentioned, the Holy Spear, the Spear of Destiny, and the Lance of Longinus, uh, which I believe... Longinus was the uh, supposed name of the man who had held the spear and stabbed Jesus in the side. Right. Of course, there's no evidence supporting that that was his actual name. There's only one small reference, and you know it's not clear. So, right. That's what I heard too. That um, or read rather <laughs> uh, that Longinus was the name of the the uh, centurion. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, whoever that was that, that pierced Jesus aside, I'm sure he was impacted at the time as we hope, as well as we hope for eternity. Um, mm-hmm. And you said that he did become a believer, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, there, In the Gospels it says that he's a believer, that he was a believer? Uh, the Gospel says that he, did, that he believed, he believed at that moment. Oh, okay. That he had stabbed him. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for that refresher. I can't remember every single thing in the Gospels, <laughs> but um, that's good news to hear. <laughs> uh, well, there's also, like we said, there's numerous lances that are supposedly, there. there's the Vatican lance, there's the Echemiadzin lance, uh, the Vienna lance, and there's a couple others, but those are the three most prominent that are supposedly uh, the, the Spear of Destiny. And see, the last I heard... It, the Spear of Destiny was in a museum. I, the, what I'm coming across is that the lance is in the Vatican. So I'm not sure which is true or if any of those are true. Uh, well, like we said, we don't know if the Spear of Destiny is even really the true spear that, that killed Jesus. Right. Again, there. I mean, there's three major places that claim to have the spear, and all the spears look different. Uh, I don't know what the spears looked like back in the Roman uh, the Roman Empire at that time, because uh, they all look different, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, some. I mean, there is there is obviously some kind of historical. Uh, uh, I guess now I don't want to call it evidence because it's not really evidence, but you know, historical writings that say that it is in the Vatican, where others are saying that it's else. You know, elsewhere around the world, some say it's even in Antarctica right now, buried. I mean, we don't, we don't know. We just don't know. Of course, whoever has it believes that it really is their lance, unless, of course, it's fake. You know, they know it's fake, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that past the Roman Empire, if you will. That is the Vatican, in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't put it past them to have something they know is fake and chop it off as being real because guess what it gets more people to come visit the Vatican it brings in more money it gets more people falling to their knees for the Pope which is just sick right. uh, but you know they want power too I did hear uh, that um, that encased or in the lance that um, that there's a nail supposedly um, that that came from the cross um, that nailed Jesus to the cross that apparently somebody that had obtained it had I guess encased it with a nail I guess somebody uh, I guess in the last couple hundred years or whatever um, they studied it and um, I, I think that they had come up with um, some uh, forensic evidence that that it was around 7th century AD Mm-hmm. So that doesn't totally square up with Jesus well, being 33 years old, but right. who knows? <laughs> well, I, I haven't read anything about the uh, about there supposedly being a nail which was embedded into the lance or anything. But in the year 1000, Otto III gave Bolesław the first of Poland a replica of the so-called Holy Lance at the Congress of Gnizno. I, I think it's Gnizno. And in 1084, Henry the Fourth had a silver band with the inscription "Nail of Our Lord" added to it. Uh, and of course, this was based on the belief that it 
that it was the lance of Constantine the Great, which enshrined the nail used for the crucifixion. So, and if you look online, there is an image of it, uh, of this so-called spear with the nail in it, but it's a replica. Um, and so it's safe to say that the actual spear, uh, which is not this one, doesn't have the nail in it. Just the replica does, has, you know, supposedly does. Uh, and it's interesting because, you know, they, they wrapped a silver, uh, they kind of put a silver boot around it that says Nail of Our Lord. And then later, a gold one, a gold sleeve was added to it instead, which also says uh, the Nail of Our Lord. But... Uh, I have some notes here. Um, it says, Dr. Howard Buchner, MD, professor of medicine at Tulane, and then Louisiana State University wrote two books on the spear. Uh, Buchner was a retired colonel with the U.S. Army who served in World War II and had written a book about the Dachau Massacre. He claimed he was contacted by a former U-boat submariner, the pseudonymous Captain William Bernhardt, who claimed the spear currently on display in Vienna is a fake. Uh, Bernhardt said the real spear was sent by Hitler to Antarctica, like you said, along with other Nazi treasures under the command of Colonel Maximilian Hartmann. In 1979, Hartmann allegedly recovered the treasures. Bernhardt presented Buchner with the log from this expedition as well as pictures of the objects recovered, claiming that after the Spear of Destiny was recovered, it was hidden somewhere in Europe by a Nazi secret society. After contacting most of the members of the alleged expedition and others involved, including Hitler youth leader Arthur Axman, Buchner became convinced the claims were true. So who knows what's true or what's false? You know, even when scientists claim, you know, uh, you know, such and such is, you know, X amount of billions or millions of years old, I mean, you know, I'm to the point where I'm not even sure if I can believe, you know, quote experts you know, or quote scientists, you know. Right. Um, I'm sure there, there's many that are legitimate, but, you know, because of, you know, maybe another agenda, you know, they might you know, skew evidence or something like that. But, I mean, it's the, the spirit of destiny isn't too controversial at this point, you know, um, but I th- I'm sure that it was very controversial, um, you know, that at the time of Hitler, I think. Um, I think that that if, if somebody were to, you know, come forward and say, you know, I have the true, you know, spear of destiny and what have you, I, I'm sure that, you know, like all the media would be on it, like, you know, white on rice and, you know, they'd have to cough up some, some very, very good forensic uh, evidence, you know, that that seemed to support it. Uh, but there hasn't been, really been any recent um I guess controversy or focus on it or whatever, but it's it's definitely fascinating. So fascinating that it's found its way into popular culture and uh, movies and books and such. Um, I know in DC Comics, um, it looks like they there was some. Uh, well, Hitler obviously isn't fictional, but they they um, they had used the Hitler character in DC Comics. Um, with the Spear of Destiny, uh, it says that uh, in DC Comics, Hitler used it to prevent superpowered characters, particularly those vulnerable to magic, from interfering in World War II. And it uh, looks like there's it's been in several movies um, and video games. <laughs> uh, in the movie The Librarian Quest for the Spear, um, the protagonist, Slim Carson, searches for the Spear of Destiny. Um video game called Spear of Destiny yep. uh, features Wolfenstein protagonist B.J. Blackowitz's uh, attempt to recover the Spear of Destiny from Nazi Germany and and so on and so forth. Oh, actually, here's, here's the one that's most recent in a recent movie. Um, Constantine, the spear is used to help the devil's son come to Earth. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's sinister. Yeah. Now, what would they use? The spear of destiny in a way that would conjure up the devil. <laughs> well, and that, yeah. that kind of goes to show, you know, what what really is this this the spear that people say they have. And you know, there's it was actually very interesting because uh, I had played a particular PC game when I was younger, and it had Richard Wagner as uh, kind of in the role if you will, because this guy was uh, looking for a lost Richard Wagner uh, 
play. But in my research, I came across that uh, in Parsifal, Richard Wagner's opera that was based on a poem, he brings up the Spear of Destiny and brings up that the the Knights of the Grail, or the Knights Templar, if you will, had confiscated the, the spear and hit it. And it was, it's also brought up by Trevor Ravencroft, uh, who wrote a book about it and actually had mentioned uh, The Mark of the Beast uh, was the name of the book, and he claims that Adolf Hitler actually started World War II to find the spear. And in all of the time that Hitler w- was in power, he was constantly looking for uh, occult artifacts, uh, the supposed artifacts of Christianity, and uh, so... It, it's kind of interesting to see that somebody actually wrote a book entitled The The Mark of the Beast and mm-hmm. The Spear of Destiny was included in that book. And and also, uh, because actually you just saying that, Justin, just uh, clicked something here, but <laughs> it's rare but that something clicks every once in a while. <laughs> uh, but Jerry, you had mentioned, you know, it, you said it was kind of weird uh, and why would someone use a, a so-called holy relic to raise, you know, the Antichrist, basically. How does that even work? But at the same time, when you think about it, we were talking about how this the Spear of Destiny gives power, supposedly gives power to whoever possesses it. And we know that the Spear of Destiny is indeed a Christian artifact. And at the time, and still now, Christianity is one of the strongest and largest religions on earth. And of course, whoever possesses those artifacts is many, many, many religious believers who follow like Catholicism, for example, and a number of other beliefs. Uh, a lot of these artifacts have power. And if anyone possesses these Christian artifacts, guess what? That power is moved to that person who has it. So even someone like Hitler, who is against Christianity, who is possibly Satanist or something else, you know, who doesn't believe Jesus really did exist, or maybe he does believe and he just doesn't care, he's against them. He knows that if he has these Christian symbols, that he'll be able to get the Christians to bow before him. He'll be able to revert time and uh, change things to the way that he wants. Suddenly, Christianity is no longer what the 12 apostles set out to have it uh, or, or set out to to make it as Christ had developed it, you know, but instead it becomes something different, something maybe more sinister, something that's more along the secular lines of, you know, whatever Hitler wanted. So obviously there's, there's this exchange in power in some way and somehow, whether or not it's magical, you know, I, I don't believe so, but there is obvious power. Mm-hmm. That's really a good uh, viewpoint that that whoever possesses it, you know, um, c- you know, could be, you know, looked upon as, as somebody, you know, that, um, you know, could be able to, like you said, you know, um, you know, change Christianity around to be something that is not. I'm sorry, but when you we were talking about the spirit of destiny and this has nothing to do with anything, but <laughs> I just thought of, um, <laughs> you know, uh in 300, you know, when uh, yes. Gerard's character yeah, has the spear, you know, and, and what does he say? Uh, I am Sparta, or, or whatever. This is Sparta, yeah. yeah. Or this is Sparta, right. This is Sparta! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it was just something I thought of. <laughs> and I, I actually, yeah, last night I was telling Justin, I said, I should buy a spear, a fake spear, you know, that, uh, uh, like a a centurion, you know, w- would have, you know, for a costume party, you know, j- just to to use it, you know, and say, you know, I have the spear of destiny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then Justin said, yeah, go for it. But I did, I ran out of time, but, but I would have, or I should have. <laughs> 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 it's fascinating, oh, though. It's... <laughs> well, one question I have for you guys before we go to next break here, because it'll probably uh, be kind of an extensive answer for you guys. Uh, since there are so many spears that are supposedly the spear that uh, punctured the chest of Jesus Christ, do you think any of them are or could be the true spear? Do you think that the spear w- has been lost to to the ages? Um, w- what what's your final take on it? 
Uh, I guess I'll take this one first, Jerry. Sure. <laughs> uh, you're awfully <laughs> quiet over there. <laughs> um, Which is a rarity <clears throat> for her, by the way. It is. Yeah. <laughs> you're so, maybe unsure. <laughs> that's a tough one. And I'm going to have to... I know it's kind of a cop-out, but I'm going to have to take a two-sider on this and say yay and nay. Uh, I think that there is a slim chance that the spear does exist. Uh, But I don't necessarily believe that any of the current people who claim to have it actually do have it. It might be out there, and it might be in someone's possession, but it's not going to be a big, you know player in the world's religions today or in the world's publicity or whatever, you know. Um, Much like the Ark of the Covenant, no one has, supposedly has real possession of it. There's one group that claims to have it, but we don't know. It's in a tiny hut and no one can get in. There's two armed guards that are standing outside at all times. Whether or not it's really there, we don't know. On the other hand, I think that there's a very, very, very strong possibility that it doesn't exist anymore, that it was just destroyed uh, over time. It rusted out and just poof, disappeared. Um, reason being is because I think the man who would have stabbed Jesus with it, I think there's a possibility that he would dis- just sort of gotten rid of it. He would have walked away. He became a believer. He didn't want to, you know, maybe didn't want to have that blood on there. You know, it's too sacred. So why hold on to it? Let it go to the earth where, uh, you know, the blood would belong uh, for someone who died. Do you think he would have um, destroyed it? I don't think he would have destroyed it necessarily. Uh, I think he would have put it in a safekeeping, um, but I don't think he would have, you know, had it in such safekeeping that it would have been passed down from generation to generation. Um, Yeah, I think, I don't think so. I think he would have just, it's it's much like the, uh, uh, what's it called? The, uh, I know there's a specific name for it, but the cup that was used at the Last Supper. Um, The Holy Grail? The Holy Grail. Yeah, the Holy Grail. You know, that's another thing. You know, that's another one of those big uh, historical icons, if you will, that, religion uses uh, supposedly has power supposedly able to give everlasting life etc cetera, etc cetera, mm. which we know the only true everlasting life comes from belief in Jesus Christ one cannot literally survive physically for their enti- for eternity unless God grants it um, well that's where which, you break down people using allegory to give something <laughs> meaning right right um so, you know, I think that there's a very good possibility that this man would have dropped the spear uh, and he would have become a disciple and would have started preaching the good news as well. And therefore, he wouldn't have held it on him anymore. He could have resigned from the uh, from, from from the military at the time. I don't know. We don't know. There's nothing going on uh, beyond about that soldier except or after the piercing. We don't know. We don't know what happened. So I think there is a good possibility based on how large the world is, based on what type of climates the world has gone through since then and how many times it would have exchanged hands, it would have just possibly disappeared. So I think so. I, I think that, um, you know, I just ditto <laughs> what Eric said. Um, I think that if, if it actually, you know, is – still intact that um, it's just uh, unobtainable it's just inaccessible um, I think that if somebody you know were to you know bring it forth and whatever I mean I guess just like in a lot of things you know that that um, you know a person would just need to have faith I guess that it is or it isn't but of course we don't put our faith in, in relics we in the in the spirit of destiny or the holy grail or or the shroud of Turin or what have you even though I I do believe that the shroud of Turin you know it was in, in fact the very shroud of Christ but of course you know nobody worships nobody should worship it or what have you but I just right. think that it points to um, the uh, the crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ um, 
So it is interesting, though, that that there's legends surrounding, you know, the Spear of Destiny and, and, you know, uh, what happened to it, who had it, uh, what happened to them. Um, Is is it real? Um, you know, I mean, is it is it still in existence today and what have you? Um, it is. I found it you know quite interesting that that it's in legends and folklore and, and what have you. You know, because anything that that has to do with um, Christ, you know, because you know obviously he's the Son of God, uh, God made manifest in the flesh. That that anything with regards to God, you know, is going to be uh, really. I guess um, expounded on or, or, or really focused upon, you know, and it, it just seems like people that that don't know the Lord, you know, will, will focus on these things, you know, to give them, you know, um, eminence or or power um, or uh, you know some type of uh, anonymity or not anonymity is the opposite of what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, will will give them you know some fame and notoriety and what have you. You know, so I think if a person really does know Christ, you know, they're they're not going to be you know. Uh, focusing on or tr- trying to obtain relics and what have you um, or obsessing over it and, and whatever but it is interesting very fascinating right well it, I agree with both you guys uh, I, I'm no, I can't say with 100% clarity that none of these are the the spear but I can also say that I don't believe that they are I believe that people are putting belief into something that they think it is. So I, I agree 100%. I just wanted to get your guys' take on it because uh, there are the the uh, radicals out there that are going to say that absolutely that this spear does exist. This this person, this person, this person does truly have it, and it does have the powers that people say it does. So right. I, I agree 100%. I can say yes and no. Yes, I believe it does exist or did exist, and I say no that I don't believe that these spears that these people have are truly it. Is it possible? Yes. I don't think it is though. Yeah. I mean, so you got to remember. I mean, uh, there have been a lot of wars in both in the name of God and against the name of God, in which people would go out to purposely destroy a lot of these relics that you know many claim to have. And to say that these all of these relics have been able to survive, just it, it's hard to fathom. We only know of one relic that actually has survived, and that's the Word of God. The Bible is literally the only relic, the only book in all you know history that has been sought out to be destroyed and survived. There have been wars specifically in an effort or as an effort to destroy the Bible. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands, if not millions of Bibles have been burned, destroyed, torn up, so on and so forth. And yet the Bible still continues to exist today, which is more reason as to why God is God and why the Bible is the written word of God. Because it's the only book to survive as long as it has uh, through many, many wars. But, you know, the word of God is much different from an object. You know, God tells us not to make idols of objects. But the words of God last for eternity. And that's, I think that right there is enough evidence to support why the Bible exists after so many wars. And I think gives us the strong conclusion that many of these artifacts just aren't real, or the possibility anyway. So, But on that note, I suppose we're going to take a quick break here. <laughs> So, folks, you are listening to Prayer Truth Radio, and we will be right back after Justin's Paranormal Headlines. And now, Prayer Truth Radio's Paranormal Headlines. How's it hanging, para fans? Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines, and these headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. Broadhaven Triangle House goes up for sale. A house at the center of the 1977 Broadhaven Triangle UFO mystery has recently gone on the market. Formerly known as the Haven Fort Hotel, this idyllic coastal retreat was once the scene of a UFO sighting so mysterious that the incident ended up being investigated by the Ministry of Defense. 
The Broadhaven sightings began in 1977 when hotel owner Rosa Granville was awoken in the early hours by a strange noise and saw a series of peculiar flashing lights through her window. When she looked out, she observed what she described as an upside-down saucer in a nearby field and two faceless humanoids on the ground next to it. It was early morning, and Mum was woken by a buzzing noise, and she thought she'd left the gas boiler on. Once downstairs, she realized the noise was from outside, said her daughter, Frances. She looked out and saw about 100 feet away an oval object she could only describe as a spacecraft with lights slowly land and two figures emerge in silver suits. A similar sighting was reported a short time later at a local primary school. A total of 14 children, along with their head teacher, witnessed what was described as a yellow cigar-shaped craft landing nearby and saw a strange figure dressed in silver clothing emerge from it. Even to this day, the truth behind the Broadhaven sightings continues to remain a total mystery. FBI gives up on D.B. Cooper hijacking mystery. Officials have finally admitted defeat after failing to solve the case of a 1971 airline hijacking. Described as the longest and most exhaustive investigation in U.S. history, the hunt for the mysterious individual known as D.B. Cooper has spanned over five decades. The original incident began when a man, who at the time went by the name Dan Cooper, boarded Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305 to travel from Portland to Seattle. During the trip, Cooper called over one of the flight attendants and asked them to write out a note declaring that he had a bomb in his briefcase and that the plane was being hijacked. When the aircraft stopped at Tacoma International Airport, he allowed the passengers to leave in exchange for four parachutes and the sum of $200,000 in cash. After the plane had taken off again, Cooper strapped the bag of money to himself, put on one of the parachutes, and jumped out somewhere between Seattle and Reno. No trace of him was ever found. Some believe that Cooper had perished after jumping from the plane, while others believe that he had survived and had used the stolen money to change his identity and disappear off the grid. Either way, the trail has remained cold for years, and the FBI has finally given up looking for him. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Parachute Radio. My name is Eric. I'm Justin. I'm Jerry. And we are broadcasting through, if you didn't know, the Parachute Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we had a pretty awesome episode today about the Spear of Destiny. I don't know your everyone's current views listening or watching YouTube. You know, I don't know what you guys believe about the Spirit of Destiny, uh, but please feel free to comment. You know, on the on the links below, uh, hit us up on Facebook, email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let us know your thoughts and opinions about the Spirit of Destiny. Do you agree or disagree with anything that we said during the show? We'd like to know. Um, I will leave at least on my part. I will leave this one note. Uh, no matter what it is, whether it's the Spirit of Destiny or the uh, the shroud, what was it called? The Shroud of what? Turin. Or Turin, the Shroud of Turin, or uh, the Holy Grail, or the Ark of the Covenant, whatever it is, when it comes down to artifacts, when it comes down to physical pieces of history, folks, you have to remember that God has always said, do not create idols of those objects. So whatever your focus is, Make that focus be on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Bible speaks of the spear one time, and there's a reason he only spoke about it once. It's because it's not that important. All it did was fulfill a prophecy. The true prophecy is that Jesus Christ will return, and that is yet to be fulfilled. But one day he will come back, and he will come back in all his glory and bring the new kingdom and the new heaven upon earth. So uh, look forward to that. Keep your faith and hope in that. One day it's going to come, folks. Anything out of you two? Who would, any my final uh, 
thoughts? Um, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it's great that if these artifacts really do exist, that we, we have found them, that's great. But I don't think we should be concentrating. On, I mean, r- regardless of you're saying, you know, concentrate on God, whatever faith, as far as under the Christian umbrella, if you will, uh, I don't think anybody should be concentrating on these particular relics, as Eric said. Just keep your your faith in God uh, and yourself in Him, as well as uh, other than just concentrating on Him, yourself in Him. And I don't I don't think that we should be concentrating on that. Uh, you know, like we said about conspiracy theories, concentrating on them just gives them power. With these artifacts, that's all you're doing is you're putting power into something that really has nothing to to really give. Do I believe that there are things out there of the metaphysical, occultish things that supposedly have power? Yeah, because people are giving that power to it. And they think it has power when really it doesn't. That's right. Um, I totally ditto what we both are saying, um, that we're focusing, you know, if we're focusing on Jesus and, and his work on the cross, and, and um, which was to, to save anyone who believes in their heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, uh, and calls upon him, you know, that that's should be the focus there. And I don't think too many people are, are, are focusing on the spear of destiny or, or what have you. A, a good friend of mine, um, he had said that, uh, like focusing on relics is, is like, you know, fo- focusing on a, a piece of, you know, clothing or what have you uh, of that person, you know, like if you, if you happen to like worship someone's underwear or something like that, you know, <laughs> it's completely futile and fruitless. That's a really disturbing <laughs> and, thought. <laughs> right. It is. it is disturbing. Yes. Right. I'll, I'll have to, to credit my friend Paul, uh, for saying that, um, and obviously, you know, we don't, you know, want to, you know, focus on that person's, you know, underwear. For example, we want to focus on the person that that fills the underwear. You know, um, in, in this case, you know, we don't want to focus on the spear, you know, that pierced Jesus the side. You know, we want to focus on on, you know, Jesus himself. You know, who is, you know, uh, was resurrected, you know, from the grave and is alive forever and ever, and uh, is the Son of God and is God and. Um, I did want to say something kind of funny about this. Will, will the real will will the real spear stand up, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I highly uh, uh, yeah. Somewhere. Well, well. <laughs> on that note, uh, we actually have some bad news. Oh no! That uh, <laughs> Jerry from Tagro from God Radio is leaving Fair Truth Radio Network. So, Jerry, I wanted to give it to you to say your farewells, uh, as well as let everybody know where they will be able to find you after you leave. Thank you for the melodramatic music, Justin. I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, Well, unfortunately, uh, it is a bittersweet ending to my uh, ride on the Paratruth Radio Network train. Choo-choo! Now Um, we're just a caboose or something. We don't even have a train anymore. um, (laughs) I really enjoyed being part of the Paratruth Radio Network with uh, with Justin and Eric. They're awesome guys, and I loved listening to them before I was on board, and, and loved podcasting alongside them and we'll love listening to them afterwards and then of course doing our occasional shows uh, together but um, I just can't be able to juggle um, all of my different priorities in life such as uh, working full time uh, and at this point looking for a full time job uh, since my my job is coming to an end because I'm getting laid off Um, so working at a full time job and then um Also, you know, uh, spending time with my husband and also, um, you know, being involved at church and then also adding uh, college into the mix. I know some people can do all those five things plus podcasting um, and and to do it successfully and and, uh, they can soar like an eagle, but but I can't. Instead, I I started like instead of soaring like an eagle, just like crashed like. The wings eventually stop flapping. You're like a you're, you're like a dodo bird. Just a dodo bird. Just stay on the ground. Why fly when you can walk? I mean, 
I came extinct to like the dodo bird after a while in terms of podcasting. <laughs> but I, I still will exist um, in, in another realm. No, I'm just kidding. I will still exist <laughs> with Thai Girl for God Radio. Um, so uh, I will I will still be on, on Spreaker. Um, I don't know what the, the actual URL is, but it's going to be uh, Spreaker.com. And, and type in Thai Girl for God Radio, and, and I should um, pop up there with all of my past shows and my future shows and what have you. Um, and then, I'll, of course, I'll continue doing YouTube as well. So I'll be on YouTube and Spreaker and whatever else Spreaker publishes, too. Uh, but again, this is not to say that we'll never do a, a show with the three of us or, or, you know, four or five of us, you know, maybe Justin and Kay and whoever else, you know, would like to, to get on board, you know. But I, I really, really appreciated, you know, being on board. And uh, it was fun, interesting, exciting, and challenging. Um, but uh, so even though I'm stepping down, it doesn't mean I'm stepping out <laughs> of podcasting. But uh, but I love you guys in Christ, and uh, I love all my listeners. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll transfer over uh, to uh, – my show not, not all of them not permanently because we need you guys so <laughs> right. you can go to her whenever she's on but stay with us on Sunday oh yes yes absolutely stay, <laughs> stay with Justin and Eric you know when they're on but then of course you know uh, whenever I'm on visit. Visit, yeah, yeah visit me it says we're going to visit <laughs> absolutely yes stay uh, on board with them and then visit me once in a while <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, I think uh, I know we both we said this before, uh, but I think speaking for both Justin and I, we're going to miss you, and we're glad to have you part of the uh, Paratruth Radio Network for as long as you were part of it. Uh, you know, we, we've. We've, we've kind of seen you grow, if you will, in podcasting uh, from when you first started us trying to help you out in different places. And uh, yeah, I, I think you're going to do well, you know, on your own. So, again, if you need any help, feel free to. Well, Justin's probably the best to contact, but, you know, I'm here, too. Uh, how often? And, and, how often? Well, that depends on whether or not I'm actually messaged or texts or whatever. So if I don't get a message, I can only do so much. I don't check emails often. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep you in our prayers. And actually, before we send out the show and send off for the night, I'd like to just, you know, say a quick little prayer for you uh, you. and send you off. Um, So we can bow our heads or, you know, however you like to pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for the time that we're able to do this show uh, together as a family of podcasters and a family in Christ. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you watch over Jerry as she goes on uh, to her new adventure beyond podcasting for the time being. Uh, I pray that you're with her and that you guide her and lead her in everything that she does and in all the choices that she makes. Uh, I pray that one day, if it is in your will, that she comes back to podcasting and is even better than she already is, Lord. Uh, I pray that she keeps her mind on you and her heart on you always. I pray that you're with both her and her husband through thick and thin. And I just ask, Lord, that you're with all of us to the day of our death and beyond. And all this I pray in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Can I pray too? Sure. Yeah. Father, thank you so much for my brothers in Christ, um, Justin and Eric. Father, thank you, Lord, that that they've been such a blessing, uh, not only to me, but but countless others, Lord, who have been um, encouraged and edified and strengthened and even humored uh, by uh, their spirits and their uh, warm, cordial uh, personalities, Lord God, to uncover um, the... Uh, supernatural and, and deep things um, that a lot of people don't talk about, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless them, uh, provide for them, protect them, Lord. Um, I just pray, Lord, that, that they would continue um, reaching uh, listeners and watchers, Lord. Um, now that they're on YouTube, Father, I just pray that they that they would continue making an impact uh, on on the, the people out there, Lord God. And that even if it's just one soul, one person uh, per episode, Lord God. Um, could be touched and and um, would uh, be able to have some understanding uh, more than they had before, or even if if they're if even if a seed is planted in their hearts um, as a result of what they say, Lord, um, then it, it's all the more worth it, Father. Um, Lord, I just pray that you continue to utilize them and bless them um, and anoint their message, Lord God, so that they they can continue to uh, speak your words and, and to continue to examine and analyze and discuss. Um, um, these different topics, Lord, from a Christian 
um, perspective as well as um, uh, perspective, Lord God, that is common um, to a lot of uh, people in the paranormal community, Father. Um, and uh, again, may your hand be upon them, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to podcast with them, and I just pray that uh, that I would continue as well, and that uh, your hand will be upon uh, Justin uh, and his uh, new uh, wife, uh, Shelly, and I pray you bless them and their family, and bless Eric and his family, and his uh, uh, school and filmmaking pursuits and such lord and uh thank you for everything we love you lord amen amen, amen. all right folks. all right folks oh jinx <laughs> don't, don't, don't don't be careful Duh. you owe me a coke buddy <laughs> <laughs> you, you would you like to take it out justin oh i just wanted to uh let you guys know give a couple uh, next week we're talking about the shout the 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 shroud of Turin. Speak your tongue. <laughs> the shout the shroud of Turin. Uh, week after that we're talking about the power of prayer uh, with a guest that uh, Jim Mallard actually referred us to. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know if you guys have any topics you want us to cover that we haven't yet. Uh, I'm thinking about sleep paralysis. I'm thinking about black eyed children. If you guys have any thing that we haven't covered that you want us to let us know paratruthradio at gmail.com you can contact us through our website uh, paratruthradio.com and on Facebook Twitter Spreaker YouTube iHeart or I'm sorry you can't contact us there you can listen to us there uh, and uh, Google Plus and Instagram and then listen to us on iHeart Radio iTunes and all the numerous podcasting softwares there are out there Google us You'll find us. <laughs> My favorite thing, just Google. <laughs> uh, just Google. Well, folks, that is the end of our show today. It is a sad time always at the end of the show. But oh, wow. it's, yeah, but it's been a great episode. We had some great discussions, some laughs, and a lot of fun. So I hope you all did too. So until next week, same time, same place. My name is Eric. I'm Justin. And I'm Jerry with High Girl for God Radio. Peace. Peace, y'all. If you enjoyed this episode of Parachute Radio and you would like to listen to it again or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can listen to them on HD at our website, parachutheradio.com. And you can also find us at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for brand new updates of our show every day.